Hello everyone and welcome to a breastfeeding class presented by the Breastfeeding Clinic in the Heldeberg Basin, Cape Town, South Africa. So just a quick disclaimer, the information provided in this program is to assist you in exploring all available options to empower you to make well-informed decisions to help you feel in control, be responsible for and have confidence in your choices. Information should please not be substituted for the diagnosis and treatment of any medical condition and also please never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something that you have received in this program. And this recording is not intended to replace professional or medical or other kinds of advice. Now in this recording we will be looking at using a breast pump and I have highlighted it for you on the list of topics that we are covering in this breastfeeding class series. Now breast pumps are ideal to stimulate lactation if a baby suckling is not yet sufficient to do so, for example uh, with premies, or to collect milk for babies who are being fed by a tube or maybe with a cup, or if a baby needs supplementary feeding, or if you are working away from baby to keep up your milk supply and collect milk for a baby uh, for a baby's feeding while you are separated. Now, the breast pump market offers a bewildering range of devices to choose from, some with corresponding phone apps and some you wear in your bra. Those are the truly hands-free type. And like breastfeeding, we want a pump that is both comfortable and efficient. Now, grouping the pumps together, we can choose from manual or hand pumps and they generate suction manually and some uh, has a, a squeeze handle you get this uh, cylinder type or the silicone milk collectors or milk savers now just a quick note on these silicone milk savers they're at the top right corner on the slide many mothers will use these silicone milk savers on the opposite side when the baby is, uh, well, either when the baby is feeding or when she's maybe using a single pump because the oxytocin reflex that's released from the brain into the bloodstream that drives the milk flow that goes to both breasts during feeding or expressing and the vacuum created in the silicone collector um, when it is squeezed to apply to the breast that will also draw out milk with an oxytocin reflex however be careful to perhaps not use these milk savers every single time that you express or breastfeed because it could lead to an oversupply or problems like mammary dysbiosis or plug ducts or nipple vasospasm or possible mastitis also the tunnel or opening that goes over the breast of many of these silicone collectors are really wide causing the mother's nipple to swell or increase in size leading to pain and possible nipple damage just note these bicycle horn style manual pumps they are not recommended if a person wants to give the milk to a baby other groups um, in uh, when we're grouping pumps together are uh, single or double electric or battery operated pumps yes I know um, we get very nice ones nowadays these in the slide are mine that I used about two decades ago and then the third group is um, our hospital grade electric multi-user rental pumps now usually the equipment that attaches the mother to the pump must be purchased and these pumps are closed system breast pumps they have a barrier in between the milk collection kit and the pump mechanism which prevents milk from getting into the machine and this is why they can be used by multiple people now the pumps are very efficient but they're not very portable um, and also I know there are a few personal use breast pumps that claim to be closed system pumps um, but I don't think they are multi-user pumps the rental pump in this picture this is the Slactina um, to my knowledge that has been discontinued so as far as I know in South Africa the available hospital grade rental pumps are um, Medela Symphony and uh, Amidas uh, Pearl hospital grade breast pumps those are the only two that I know of that can be used by multiple users but as I said 
a mother needs to purchase the equipment that attaches the mother to the pump, like the bottle and the flange and the tubing, etc. Now, just a quick note on second-hand pumps. The breast pump market um, has a lot of pumps available uh, for purchase second-hand. So some mothers would maybe give their pumps away or borrow their pumps or other mothers would purchase previously used breast pumps. But this practice has the potential for cross-contamination and improper functioning um, and it's discouraged to purchase or use a second-hand pump. And the reason is that these pumps are personal hygiene products. So any of the pump parts that are exposed to the previous user's milk may harbor viruses that were present in that mother system from cracked nipples or bleeding nipples, whatever. And the baby could become in, ill if these viruses are then passed to them. Now, some of these viruses are like the cytomegalovirus, uh, hepatitis, uh, human immunodeficiency virus, um, the HTLV1 virus. Um, these are the most common viruses that are transferred through human milk. And to my understanding, Except for HIV, the other virus, viruses can't really be boiled out of a pump. Um, but if you can autoclave a pump pump, that, that would be an exception. Okay, also most single user pumps are often open system and they may not um, have a protective barrier, meaning it's possible for the milk particles to be sucked into the pump tubing as well as parts of the pump that cannot be cleaned and then mold can start to develop there. But maybe keeping the pump at chest level could help protect against aspiration of milk into the pump mechanism. And then the other thing is secondhand pumps can also be ineffective um, because they have a limited lifetime so they may not be able to generate a strong enough vacuum and then that puts the mother's milk supply at risk because the device cannot operate, operate at its uh, optimum. So just keep these things in mind when thinking about using a, a second-hand pump. Okay, so the method a mother chooses for expressing whether she's going to use her hands or a hand pump or an electric pump or a rental pump, that will depend on her, her baby and her reason for expressing. So when a mother is highly motivated, any pump type can be successful in any situation. The things to consider when buying a pump are how long will you need the pump for or maybe how long and frequent will you and baby be separated how much can you afford to spend on a pump and the price range for personal use pumps in south africa is anything from 300 to 18,000 rand also think about what facilities are available at the site where you will be using the pump um, things like uh, a private room, a comfortable chair, electrical access, a sink, clean water, a refrigerator, etc. And if you are going to pump at work, what type of work do you do? And do you have a private office? And are you working in an open space or are you on the road? And will you have time to express? Some other considerations when you buy a pump are how portable is the pump? Is the pump heavy? Is it bulky? What is the pump's noise level like? How easy is it to use? How easy is it to clean? How easy is it to assemble? And the instructions that come with the pump, how easy is that to understand? And then once you have your pump, how efficient is this pump? Do you see a lot of sprays? We'll talk about that in a bit. And also how comfortable is the pump? Because pumping should not hurt at all. And we'll see why now. Now, um just want us to take a few uh, look at a few pumping tips now to express using just your hands can be time consuming e even though there are people who prefer this method nevertheless i um, think if you are going to express away from home make sure that you know how to hand express for that day that you forget your pump at home so watch the recording on hand expressing so if a mother is using a hand pump, it's it's a bit more work than using an electric pump um, because you have to keep pumping the handle to create a vacuum, whereas with an electric pump, the motor does the pumping, but the plan is still the same. So start by washing your hands before sitting down to pump. 
Um, hygiene practices are extremely important since most contamination of milk happens uh, when pumping uh, or expressing if, if your her hands are dirty. So clean um, and assemble the, the breast pump using the manufacturer's written instructions that comes with the pump. And then before you start pumping, try to stimulate an oxytocin letdown reflex. Now you need to be comfortable or be in a comfortable place to express, preferably a quiet and private place. Otherwise, the oxytocin letdown reflex might not work as well. Now, more oxytocin means more milk and less oxytocin means less milk. So it is possible to start this oxytocin lead on reflex without a baby suckling because the brain is wired in such a way that the nerve pathways for milk ejection runs through the emotion processing area of the brain. So it is also possible that the oxytocin reflex can be slowed by things like pain and tension and stress, etc. And, and then just a warning, sometimes the best way to stop a, a lay down in its tracks is to watch the bottles. That stress of watching the milliliters is enough to severely limit anyone's ability to express. So look at something else. Chant to yourself, any breast milk at all is precious to my baby. And visualize waterfalls and baby's content little face after feed, whatever helps the milk flow. So when expressing, you can help the lay down reflex work by sitting in a comfortable position. Relaxing your shoulders and chest muscles, taking deep breaths, and think happy thoughts, involve as many of your senses as possible, listen to music, seeing baby, or looking maybe at a photo of your baby, if baby's not nearby. Some mothers respond very strongly to smell. Um, so if you're expressing away from baby, take the clothes baby wore yesterday with you and sniff it in preparation of pumping. And then placing a warm, not too hot, uh, face cloth uh, over your breast could also help. And massaging the breast gently. And then some <clears throat> very smooth strokes uh, from the chest wall towards the nipple. Um, maybe drawing out the nipple gently between the f uh, your fingers. Um, all of these things can help um, uh, stimulate an oxytocin reflex. If you want to know more about... Um, massaging the breast before expressing, have a look at the earlier recording on hand expressing. Because why do we use our hands? Our hands are attached to our brain and much better at stimulating an oxytocin reflex than a pump. Okay, right, now that we have prepared uh, the mind, the body and the breast to let go of the milk, apply the pump flange. Now, many of um, you might not know this, but make sure that the nipple is centered in the tunnel um, and that the cup has good skin contact all around to stop air leaking in. Because if the nipple hurts when you start pumping or expressing, um, just stop and check that then make sure that the nipple is centered in the flange tunnel. Um, because we want pumping to be comfortable and efficient because it's not supposed to hurt. Because if pumping hurts, it's going to impact the effectiveness of any quality pump, uh, even a high quality pump, um, because it hampers the flow of oxytocin, so it shouldn't hurt. Um, now, it is the size of the nipple, not the breast, that determines the flange size, but it's more about seeing what happens to the nipple when you pump to see what works. So what happens to the nipple when you pump? Um, uh, try look at the nipple immediately after pumping. So if your nipple is small, you might need a smaller flange. If you feel a very intense pulling pain while pumping, if you are pumping very little, um, maybe there are more drips than sprays. So we want to see a few nice strong sprays. If you don't see spraying at all, or maybe only one or two sprays, then you have to investigate. Um, also, you might need a smaller flange if pumping takes a really long time. And if, uh, or maybe a portion of the areolar tissue may be drawn into the tunnel, um, which causes swelling, and then you may have a ring shape embedded into the breast. And also the nipple might look swollen after pumping. If your nipple is large, you may need a larger sized flange if the pumping is really painful, even at a very low setting, and you are having a really difficult time removing milk, um, or perhaps you've got ongoing trouble with, with uh, plug ducts. Now, 
newer insights say that the areola should be touching the flange and the nipple should be touching the tunnel. So it's not just about adding those two millimeters on either side of the nipple to get the right flange size, though it could be helpful to measure the nipple to determine the possible size of the flange, but you have to see what happens um, with different flange sizes and how it feels and how your milk flow responds um, and which one gives the most milk with, with the most comfort. In, in my practice, I would say about 80% uh, of mothers use the 21 millimeter size or smaller. Maybe about 20% about would use 24 millimeter and only 1% would use a 27 millimeter. And as you know, most pumps come standard with a 24 millimeter flange size. Now, if a smaller flange size is needed and your pump brand or model doesn't come with a smaller flange, one can buy these nifty little uh, silicone inserts. Now, some others do better with silicone flanges, some do better with hard plastic, but remember it's about comfort and efficiency. So we don't want to see swollen nipples um, because pumping causes swelling of the nipples or, of the, or the nipples look larger after pumping, then you have to try a different flange size. Um, perhaps if your pump brand makes smaller flanges, maybe try and <clears throat> start with the hard flange and then try the silicone. And just to complicate things a little bit more, some nipples are very elastic um, and the length of the tunnel may actually matter. So some others do better with a smaller tunnel um, and the inserts may help or may not help. Okay, so with the best flange fit, only the nipple is pulled into the tunnel and during expressing the sides of the nipple touches the wall of the tunnel and the nipple moves a little bit back and forth in the tunnel and you will see lots of milk spraying um, during pumping and it feels like nothing or just a gentle tuck when pumping um, there should be no pain Right, now that we have the flange size sorted, start the suction on the lowest setting. Remember from a previous recording, the baby suck starts off slow and low um, at the breast, not fast and high. And what the pump needs to do to get the most milk out is imitate the baby. So you can pay attention to your baby suck uh, and the strength of that suckling at the beginning of a feed and then a little bit later when the milk has laid down, um, notice how your baby suck changes. So try to adjust your pump to match your baby. So you have to experiment to see what if slightly more, less, faster, slower will be work better for you um, and produce more milk. So the best setting is the one that works for you. So pay attention to what your baby does <laughs> and how your breast responds to your pump, not about uh, what other people do. But to give you an idea, um, if you remember this from a previous recording, um, it takes a baby at the breast about a minute to a minute and a half to stimulate the oxytocin reflex. So, um, uh, and then the oxytocin reflex uh, contracts the muscle cells surrounding the milk making cells and that squeezes out the milk um, and then the milk flows so the baby can get milk. Can get milk. Okay. So if you are using a hand pump with a lever handle to mimic what a baby does, you will press that lever in short succession like and then after a minute or so, you will move to a more three second hold release type pumping like. <sighs> if you are using an electric pump, you start the suction on the lower setting and you may know this as stimulation mode. And for most pumps, it would just be the on button. And then after a minute or so, you'll move the suction to a higher, but a still comfortable setting. Now, most of the more expensive pumps automatically switches to that long drawn out type sucking after about two minutes, um, mim mimicking the baby's stronger suck while, while breastfeeding. And you may know this as expression mode. Now, um, if you are not double pumping, maybe you can consider switch pumping. So it would be five minutes inside A and five minutes inside B and then again five minutes inside A and then five minutes inside B. Um, on, and every time you switch, you start the pumping on a minimum setting. Now, if you do switch pumping, it may help avoid nipple damage due to swelling if you don't have the right flange size. Um, and it also gives you a nipple kind of a five minute break. 
and if you start in the minimum setting every time you switch uh, because the laydown um, period doesn't really last longer than a few minutes um, if you start in that minimum setting you are uh, stimulating another oxytocin laydown reflex and you'll get more milk per pumping session and then once you've uh, finished pumping you can just um, maybe finish off each session with a few minutes of hand expressing into the pump flange and this will just help drain the breasts um, more thoroughly or completely so please talk to your lactation consultant if you have any issues expressing and she can perhaps share some ideas on how to maximize your output so just quickly we have spoken about um, how long and how often to express in a recording on hand expressing but here is just a recap and again this is just a suggestion so on day one and two when expressing colostrum onto a teaspoon for a non-feeding uh, newborn um, a mother might uh, hand express every hour or two until the baby is able to latch and feed effectively now colostrum is thicker than later milk it doesn't spray or spurt out um, so when you're using a pump, you may actually lose your colostrum drops in the pump. But if the baby's not stimulating the breasts yet, a mother might apply the breast pump after hand expressing, maybe for five minutes or so aside, um, just for extra stimulation. And the amount of milk a mother express will quickly increase. And then after a day or two, she might find uh, milk coming more quickly in spurts. And then perhaps you can only use a, a pump for expressing. And then if a mother is uh, expressing to increase the supply, she could maybe express a few minutes after each feed. And if she is expressing for a baby who is not feeding at the breast, she could maybe aim for, uh, if you're hand expressing, 20 or 30 minutes, 7 or 8 times a day. Or uh, using a breast pump, maybe 10 or 20 minutes at least 7 or 8 times a day. Now... Um, if a baby is not feeling directly at the breast, for example, if a mother is expressing for a preemie, a mother can try and reach a full supply or a full production by day 10. So please don't wait until later. It can be much harder to reach a full supply. So aim for about 750 mils um, per day. A full production is defined as a 24-hour volume equal to or more than 750 mils, which is ideal. 300 to 500 moles a day is considered borderline and if it's less than 350 moles in 24 hours that's considered low. So please talk to an international board certified lactation consultant if you are exclusively expressing or not reaching these volumes. And we will talk about how much to top baby up with or we actually did already talk about how much to top a baby up with in um, the recording early management goals but we will talk about how much a baby needs when they are separated maybe if, if mum goes back to work um, in a separate recording okay so thank you so much for watching this recording in the next recording which is the last recording in the breastfeeding class series we will look at milk storage guidelines so please visit the breastfeeding clinic at www.breastfeedingsa.co.za if you would like to book a private consultation and receive the class notes and you can also navigate the class recordings easier from the website and feel free to subscribe to this channel for more breastfeeding class recordings and take care till next time